compounding. And of course, I was living on all your medication that you take for headaches and just one after another, two after another, and they weren't stopping. It just got worse and worse and worse. Most of us have experienced at least one. It ranks as one of the most common of human ailments, described not only in the Bible, but in ancient medical writings. A headache, a pain in the head and neck region. The medical profession categorizes headaches into two groups. The first, primary headaches, are those not caused by an underlying medical condition. These headaches are classified as migraine, cluster, and tension headaches. The other group, secondary, are headaches caused by disease or a medical condition. I'm Sheila Walsh. Finding the Answers is a series that will introduce you to some remarkable patients and doctors from Toronto's University Health Network, which includes the hospitals Princess Margaret, Toronto General, and Toronto Western. Elliot Rafel was born June 22, 1946 in Hamilton, the younger of Riva and David Rafel's two children. Elliot has been married to his high school sweetheart Eva for over 35 years. They are the parents of two daughters, Laura and Sherry. While most times one can find Elliot busy working in his discount store, his number one priority these days is his two grandsons, Daniel and Ryan. In today's program, we'll learn more about secondary headaches firsthand from Elliot Rafel. The very beginning was about the middle of February back in the year uh, 2004. I was actually helping my daughter. We were loading some merchandise at the house that we were taking into the garage to be sorted out. And after we finished unloading all the boxes, I went upstairs to get washed up as I go down and have a bite to eat a little late supper. But all of a sudden I started to feel a very, very severe headache coming on. And it got so, it was vicious. It just felt like somebody had actually taken and cut my head open, ripped it open, and was pulling everything out of my head. And it was just, it was excruciating. I actually had a doctor appointment and I had gone for another reason and I had mentioned to the doctor about these headaches. And he said, you know, I don't like the sound of it, I really want you to see a neurologist. I had my first appointment with a neurologist here in Hamilton. And then from there they set up a series of tests where I went first for a CAT scan came back, he read the results of the CAT scan, he said there is, a, there is a problem, we're noticing something but we want to go further so they made an appointment for an MRI and then I went back to see a neurologist and he started, he said no there's a problem, they started to find what they thought it was and at first they called it an AVM and at that point he wanted me to see a surgeon here in Hamilton. And I went to see the surgeon here in Hamilton, he virtually read the report and pretty well said well it's AVM da 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 sort of left it at that and so I left there thinking okay fine everything's okay but the headaches were still going on. Elliot Rafel was diagnosed with arteriovenous malformation or AVM. AVM is the abnormal tangle of blood vessels in the brain that are prone to bleeding which can cause symptoms ranging from headaches, seizures to severe neurological problems and possibly death. In April 2004, Elliot went home believing that he'd have to suffer with his headaches forever. But the headaches didn't stop and at that point I picked up the phone, it was about two weeks later and I called back to see the neurologist and he had said, well, we've already referred you on further, like that's pretty well all that can be done. So I went back to my physician at an appointment for Tuesday morning and at that, that point, Dr. Crombie said, no, something has to be done. And he went through his books and all the information and 
picked up the phone and called um, Toronto Western Hospital. And so the appointment was set and I asked, you know, directions where I'm going because uh, I'm going downtown Toronto. That's a big city. I'm only from Hamilton, you know. And uh, got all my directions and, and went in for my first appointment. Six months after experiencing his first painful headache, Elliot Rafel had an appointment at the world-renowned Toronto Western Hospital. In February 2004, Elliot Rafel started to experience severe, frequent headaches. The 58-year-old grandfather and retail entrepreneur was diagnosed with arteriovenous malformation, or AVM, an abnormal tangle of blood vessels in the brain, which could be fatal. On August 19, 2004, Elliot had an appointment at the neuroradiology department at UHN's Toronto Western Hospital. It was there he first met internationally acclaimed radiologist, Dr. Carl Tebrug. Neuroradiology means uh, imaging of the, of the brain and the spinal cord. In the beginning we had no way of being able to demonstrate uh, neither the brain or the spinal cord. CT scanning uh, came along and it, uh, in, in the early 70s. That changed everything. Suddenly we could actually see the, the brain and the spinal cord. And then subsequently MRI came in the 80s and it showed it that even better. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is a procedure in which radio waves and a powerful magnet linked to a computer are used to create detailed pictures of areas inside the body. It's especially useful for imaging the brain, spine, the soft tissue of joints, and the inside of bones. 1985 we did our first patient and we used our tools which are the catheters the tiny little plastic tubes to enter the blood vessels and then go to the abnormality and, and fix the abnormality without actually having to open the head of the patient so the size of the vessels that we would be traveling into would be a matter of millimeters would be would be super small we enter the body in the groin so we push our devices our catheter all the way through the body into the neck and then we put a tiny little, we call it micro catheter, inside that catheter and we advance it into the brain vessels and then we have to look for the abnormality and, and find it. And, but, but you can imagine it has to be very soft because we cannot, we, we, we always run the risk of making a hole in the vessel so we cannot do that. So we have to be extremely careful when we push the catheter, when we push the catheter with a wire inside, it has to be very, very carefully done. In Mr. Elliot's case, he actually presented very innocently, and when he was investigated, the investigation showed that there was something quite dangerous there. We analyzed the situation, it turned out to be that he had a very difficult uh, abnormality deep inside uh, his head, and the abnormality consisted of uh, blood flowing from an artery directly into a vein. And uh, this put the, the blood pressure that normally in the arteries is high, very high into the, into the vein and put him at risk of bleeding uh, into his brain. When I went in to see Dr. Deberg, we went into a room where they have a computer set up and immediately he punched up on the computer and brought up my brain and he brought it up and he said to me, Move in closer, you're part of this, come on, like, look at it with me. And we studied and we looked and he showed me on there where he felt there were some problems. And we discussed the problems. And at that point he said that um, what we have to do next is we have to do an angiogram. I've only known an angiogram to be for the heart. I went in there thinking they're going to do an angiogram for my heart. A cerebral angiogram is an x-ray image of the arteries in the brain and or the head. On October 14, 2004, Elliot Rafel had his first cerebral angiogram.